This is Love and Friendship. My name is Sarah. My name is Alex, Alex Silberman. Michael Corinne. And what do we have tonight, sir? We have a very special book and guest by the author right here, Alex. Hello, my name is uh, Alex Silberman. I'm a local author, and uh, my first book is uh, called Hitchin. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and it's uh, and it's uh, it's about a uh, my trip about five years ago, um, starting out in Boston, Boston Harbor. Uh, going clear across a little bit by way of southern Ontario to uh, Santa Cruz, California, and then up and down the west coast and out east. And why did you do this? Um, I so I'd been I'd been working for Outward Bound out of uh, Philadelphia and Baltimore for for a little while, and um, and before that I had thought about doing a cross country trip, whether it was going to be hiking or hitchhiking. I didn't know. And then I figured it would take a while to walk that far. And in terms of working in the outdoors, I kind of wanted to not be taking care of anyone mm -hmm. after a little while. And so I, uh, I was at a certain point, I just set a date and came back to the Boston area and picked up all the little supplies I needed and just started walking out from the Boston Harbor. Just to do, just to do it, huh? For the adventure of the trip, yes. The challenge and adventure. <laughs> wow. Did you have a number of months or a time frame set for the hitching? No, I didn't have a time frame set, but I, I waited till it was warmer. So mm -hmm. it was May, May when I started. And then um, I think finally finished up in August or September or so by the end of the whole trip. But it took about uh, three weeks or so, three and a half weeks to get out to the West Coast. That's all, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was wow. pretty quick. It was wow. pretty quick, actually. Yeah. So you started, where did you start hitching? I started hitching uh, right from the Boston Harbor, and uh, I have a passage, if we want to start there. Sure. We'll still talk for a little Yes. Bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just right before uh, you get started, just a little, you know, normal marketing thing. Um, so uh, my book, Hitchin, is available right now on Amazon, paperback, Kindle, and it's available right now um, at the Millionaire Picnic and Harvard Bookstore, both right in Harvard Square. Um, seven stars right here in Central Square, and then over in Winchester at Bookends. Also, I'll be uh, doing an audio recording in Rhode Island at the end of March. Oh, you have the book? Yes. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it'll be an audio book. Oh, yeah, wow. You we'll get it all mastered up example. and everything else. Wow. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'll, st I'll start up right now. So we're getting a preview of the audio, audio recording. <laughs> I guess we are. Yes, we are. Um, so I'm just going to read through the acknowledgments and then um, just uh, the first little bit. So I'd like, just like to uh, say thanks to all of the characters I met along the way. Special thanks to Anthony, Nicole, Tom, and Wendy for their help during the writing and editing process. And of course, the ladies for all their support. <laughs> the ladies? My mother's. Oh. <laughs> well, you gotta some, always thank the ladies. Ladies, there's there's the ladies along the way. There's but yeah, that them too you know, as well, they, definitely. They, they, that they, both, that's what I both. assume. But that's, yeah. read that. that's an old fashioned word. Though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I think I think my sister, my older sister and brother, kind of coined it for fun as. I was go, are the ladies coming? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, well, the ladies are great, but the ladies are also a lot too. <laughs> They're, the ladies are in Vietnam as we speak, actually. Oh. Wow. Yeah, they're, 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 These ladies are your, are your mother. Yes, right? yes. And okay. they're, they're adventurous in their own right. <laughs> but to begin. All right, so Hitchin, chapter 1, 6 slash 23 slash 15, day 1, Tuesday. Quest, a long or arduous search for something. I walk down from Atlantic Ave to the Boston Harbor and ceremonially dip the toe of my right boot into the water of the Atlantic to begin my journey west. Wow. From the Boston Common, I strode toward the public gardens. Aside from the path, there were a few guys sitting on the dirt next to the grass. Their eyes caught the load on my back. We exchanged the basics. Where are you going? They said, looking interested. I stopped and caught my breath. Sweat poured out of my body. The walk had caught up to me. Out to Santa Cruz, I said. The outspoken one of the bunch, who looked more tumble than rough, spoke up. You know, there's a lighthouse you should check out when you get out to Santa Cruz. 
Then he mentioned a few other locales. While he freely gave all this information, his tattered shirt hanging loosely, I couldn't help but think, doubt I'm going to see any of the places he mentioned when I finally hit the left coast. I left them with a cheery smirk, motivated to get out of the city. <laughs> wow! So where did you go for the first hitch? Yeah, so I ended I ended up at the uh, Newton um, commuter rail station, and then I then I kept um, walking a little further, walked a little further, and I finally got a few smaller rides um, out to um, Worcester. I got this guy who's moving some small objects in a smaller. Um, and you went a, on just a small road, not a highway. I went out on Route Nine, so oh. Route Nine from the uh, Newton Highland commuter rail station to. Um, As you stood, and, stood by a light, is that it? What? Oh, I just I kind of walked along the way. It was mostly a sidewalk. There's also there was also a uh, it almost looked like a dam or bridge. I thought I had to go across. So, so did I you kinda, walk with your thumb out or? Uh, I, so I, I made a sign. I made a sign with a sharpie. On the back? On your back? On, on, a, on a piece of cardboard. And then you, how did you, and you, and you held it up or what? Yes, yeah, yeah. So, it just, so what you do is you just take a sign like this, or imagine the book is kind of the yeah. sign for the moment. You go like this and then kind of thumb this way and then kind of look back but also walk forward at the same time. So that way you're covering some ground. Especially if you don't so want to the say sign. So the, the sign would, would be facing backwards. What? You'd yeah, the sign the sign would kind of be like this. You kind of have the sign like this. Oh, you hold it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be in the reverse for the audience. And what did the sign yeah. say? Uh, the sign the sign would just say the next destination, but it said a few fun more fun things later on as well. And sometimes you put I uh, found out later on that you should put a smiley face on your sign oh. as well. Because subconsciously, I guess people are more likely to pick you up. So what was your destination when you started? So, uh, yeah, I wanted to go from uh, Boston to Santa Cruz. So you wrote Santa Cruz? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. But I, but I, I, I believe I wrote uh, Worcester first. Oh. And then I, once I was in Worcester, I, for fun, uh, once I got a little ways out, after a few other hitches I, uh, I was in West Brookfield, I, I was just like, all right, I'm going to go for it. And uh, the first location that I wanted to hit was Niagara Falls. So then I put Niagara Falls on the sign. From Worcester? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So you got a few rides out, a few rides, nothing too big in the first few rides. But, um, but then, I, then I made the sign for Niagara Falls, and then things started to change a little bit. In what way? Well, I'll have to read the next section. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And you've never hitched, have you, Sarah? Never hitched, but I did spend close to a year traveling in Central America and then mm -hmm. three months, and I visited my friend in the Peace Corps in the Philippines, oh, okay. so I did some in Southeast Asia. So I love the fact that I want to see the size of your backpack. I basically just ended up tossing a bunch of stuff and ended up with this really small bag mm -hmm. and just washed, kept like my polyester clothes, washed them with soap in the sink, Laid them out to dry. That's pretty much how I lived for three months. Wow. And it was super freeing. And how'd you, so, how'd you get from place to place? It was so inexpensive. In oh, the buses? Places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Wow. Nice. Nice. All right. Let's see. Okay. Uh, chapter two. Brandon Chafee. What a ride. Who is this guy? Standing by Route 9 in a grass patch, sign flung over back attached to my stretching rope which hung over my neck. I took a drink of water. Mass accent. Get the fack in the car! A white pickup with a lot of shit in the back. Popped in, landing on shit. Keep ya, head down so the cops don't see ya. Going down the road through town, pulled off to the driveway and where? What? Where? Hey, I'm Brandon. Look at my donkey. He hops up, stands straight up, and poses on his donkey. Oscar likes apples. Grab one. What are you, a festy kid or something? No. What does your sign say? Niagara Falls. You want a cocktail? I need a cocktail. <laughs> we hung out, had a few drinks, and smoked till it started to get dark and our stomachs began to rumble. We headed to a fine local restaurant for a delicious meal where Brandon knows the staff and I paid with him promising, I'll pay you back real soon. <laughs> wow. So that was, your, that was your, one of your first 
Yeah, so that is a man by the name of uh, Brandon Chafee. Yeah. And I ended up going with him all the way um, from, he picked me up right there in his pickup truck, and a lot of his, his life was a little chaotic at that point. And, um, and, and I can continue on in a moment, but we, uh, we started to go towards Niagara Falls. Oh. So I'm going to read a little further now and just finish off that part, but then I'll, I'll go and can see uh, a little bit more what the backpack looked like, what the rope looked like, and we have all those objects here. By the way, there are uh, mats as well. I don't know how well you we can see it from here, but um, to, you're in the books. I drew uh, pictures of kind of what happened along the way. So I don't know if you can see or... Like this Worcester and... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Anyway. Um, off to Niagara, we went the next day. So, so there was a lot going on. Strife over a canceled festival, pig jam, with mascot Oscar the donkey. Broken relationships abound, girlfriend-wise, friend-wise, and lawsuit counterclaims because of issues with the festival property. Brandon going to town meetings, calling people out for the amount of heroin moving through where. Now after the races, with his voice in my head, he quotes of hilarity and advice. God doesn't like a coward. I'd look nice if I had a rich husband. If you want something done, ask someone that's already busy. I got death threats in Worcester. I didn't understand that. It's interesting, but I didn't understand it. Oh, this, it's kind of, I can read those again, but those are um, basically, what those are just kind of yeah. aphorisms. Yeah, those are just like uh, quotes of his life, what he lives by, oh, uh, he, what's uh, going on in his life. And, oh, this and is quotes all he, from him. You this is all him. from him, yes. yes. And he was working, supposed to be working with the festival, and that guy. Yeah, so his festival on his private land, and things kind of got a little squirrely with the festival involving the city, and mm -hmm. some lawsuits, and this and that, and the other, and relationships. And so he, a lot was going on with him at the time, and he kind of needed a little uh, break. Yeah. Now, does he hold the festival every year? Uh, he no longer holds the festival with all, everything, legal yeah. proceedings and everything that happened. But um, but he's a real go-getter of guy, real positive man. I, I just saw him last week. So, um, That's awesome. So I'm going to try to hopefully get him on the sound recording. And he'll do, it'll be a lot better in his own voice <laughs> saying those things. Yeah. And he's a real powerful character. But um, That's yeah. great. And you, would, you keep, still keep in touch with... Him and probably a few other people. A few other people. I'd say mm -hmm. mainly him. I, other people were more people I knew before mm -hmm. the trip. But yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. He's one. He's one of the few that I actually have kept. You know what you remind me of now? Mm -hmm. I love taking lifts. Yeah. And sitting in the front seat. Yes. Like I used to hitch. Yeah. And people will tell me their life story. Yeah. Oh and yeah. Definitely. From here to Newton. Mm -hmm. So it's so much similar. Especially since I give them, when I go in, I give them a $5 tip. Oh, that helps. To start, yeah. <laughs> and then we have a nice conversation. Yeah. Usually, they don't usually ask too much about me. No? Really? No, they yeah. usually want to talk about their own life. Oh, yeah, I bet. Especially if you're driving around all day. Yeah. Yeah, no. So that, that's my modern hitchhiking. <laughs> to pay. <laughs> to pay. <laughs> All right, so I'll read those to you through again, and I'll, I'll just read them in a re regular voice, so hopefully it'll be a little easier to understand. So this is just this one guy. Yeah, this, yeah. yeah, this is just uh, his quotes. God doesn't like a coward. I'd look nice if I had a rich husband. Now what is, God doesn't like a coward, what, you know what inspired these words? I think, I, I think it's just what he has felt and learned from living life. Is he just saying these things? Oh yes! Things? Oh yeah! He's saying these things, hey, and he's like, he's like doing something, and he'll just be like, "God doesn't like a coward." This, wow. and, then, and then popping up, and he's kind of very go 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 guy, kind of busy guy, works his, with his hands. So uh, while he's, he's doing working this, in he lumber just says right this. now, yeah. So he's uh, yeah, and and he was moving. It, he had a lot going on that time, so he was moving. He was showing me the festival foot uh, space. All oh, well, this was going on. We're like hopping in and out of his pickup truck. There, you know, we're going to get a meal. He's, you know, and, he's a live wire. And you're getting these. And you're getting these. Real little, good guy though. Little aphorisms. Yes. 
Yes. No context. No, no, no. There's, I mean, the, the context is as it's going on, but it's, it's definitely, definitely had to feel it in the moment. I see. Definitely. Oh, so you feel... might have been talking about someone who was cowardly. Yeah. Well, we just got. It's kind of like God doesn't like the coward. So it's like, it, it, if, if someone was like anxious to do something. Yes. Or be like that. Well, God, I might as well go and do it. God doesn't like a coward. Wow. So that's, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of him. It's his his attitude, but. He's a particularly energetic and a lot going on in that moment. Yeah. So you could learn stuff from these people. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah you learn. I learned a number of different things and learn a few things, and also some is just conversation for the ride as well. But um, yeah. So there's. I'd look nice if I had a rich husband. If you which me? Wait, what? He's <laughs> talking about a rich husband. Yeah, so he's he's jo he's joking that he uh, uh, that he would look a lot better if he had a rich husband to pay for you know him to look nice or pay for his all clothes. his clothes. Gee. It's very very tongue in cheek. Not a rich thing. wife even. No, well, it's, yeah. it's, it's he's pretending that he's the wife. I think is the joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what else? If you, you want something done, ask someone that's already busy. What does that mean? I think I think that's one of I think that's one of his better, more concrete ones. That's like, if so, if you're gonna get someone like he works in construction, and I've I've done some painting for. I think it's the idea that like if for the most part, if you're just waiting for it, let's say, for instance, I wanted I wanted to create this book, or when you created your book, if you're going to someone who is like who's like, oh yeah, I'll I'll just do it for you, I'll do it for you, do it for. You. There's a good chance that, okay, maybe they just need the money, but maybe the quality of their work won't be the highest. I suppose someone who's very busy. But if someone's already busy and they're, they're high quality at their work, yes. then that's probably the person you actually I want see. to oh, get, get whatever. Yeah. If they're in the zone, and if they're in the zone, yeah. they're just going to get it done. They're going to wow. get it done. They're, they're just going to knock it out. No, no. They're like, yeah. okay, what's next? Let's Good do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then his other one is was a concrete and true one, uh, which I don't know how true it was, but I think it was definitely true. Is I got death threats in Worcester, which had to do with the festival going haywire and a few sketchy oh. characters and I mean, now this I and that. Yeah, now I understand. Yeah, so I'm glad I asked. Yeah, so that's that. So one. that was your first serious lift, right? Yeah, yeah, and that went all the way from um, from Ware, Massachusetts, Central Mass, uh, yes. the west of Worcester, all the way to Niagara Falls. Wow, that was yeah. so, how long yeah. did that take? Five yeah. hours, six. Yeah, I believe it was it was somewhere in that range, five to seven. So you lucked out. You had written Niagara Falls. Yeah, in. yeah. I just showed him. I just showed him my piece of cardboard, and he was pumped, and he wanted to get out of town anyway. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it helps a little that it was summertime and people are just looking for a reason sometime. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. And what did you think of Niagara Falls? I liked it. I liked it. It was a little strange. Um, the two of us visitors. It's a very family place, and we were two guys in our late twenties, early thirties at the time. So it was so. But uh, we did the Maid of the Mist tour. It was very beautiful. It was a lot of casinos on mm -hmm. both sides. So we went out gambling. I showed them how to gamble. It was, um, it was fun. The falls are very impressive. Um, it, it, and, but at the same time, it was, and we had fun, and we, like, played miniature, glow-in-the-dark miniature golf for fun. So we were just looking for fun, your, yeah. Your companion for Oh, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. We stayed That's... there for a few days. Wow. Yeah. Did you stay? I know some yeah. of the places, they have heart-shaped tubs. Uh, you had to avoid those. Well, I mean, if it was yeah. cheap, I don't think we would have cared. <laughs> the uh, no, we just stayed at a cheap motel outside yeah. of town. So, yeah. how much? Like, uh, I don't. It's I don't know, thirty to wow. fifty bucks or something. Oh, yeah. I don't know, something like that. And yeah. Canadian. Well, we, know, we no, we were on the American side, side, and then then I crossed over the Canadian mm -hmm. side, and then I was sleeping in the bushes yeah. off from the casinos. Yeah. No problem. The coast to Canada. Um. Uh, for, well, so we tried to cross. That was one of the annoying things because the Canadian side's a lot better. It just looks a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. yes. Better parkland, <laughs> you know. American Niagara is a lot crummier. But so they they changed the laws a number of years back, so you can no longer just use a driver's license. 
So you have to have a passport. So I had a passport because I knew I was probably going to head up that way, but he didn't have a passport. So unfortunately, oh, you had to park up. Uh, unfortunately, we could get on the bridge, but you can't actually cross over. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. But so I crossed over later on, and that's actually the next part. Uh huh. Had. Yeah. He, he must have been disappointed. He didn't have a passport. Oh, yeah, he was. He was. But we tried to make the the yeah. best of it. And we're still right at Niagara Falls. And yeah. we had a kind of good time and good place for him to figure out a few things about yeah. his life for that time being. So, yeah. All right. Um, so the next part is uh, Southern Ontario. And it is uh, the first family, I would say, I met along the journey. We should have, um, I guess, Willie Nelson playing on the road again. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. I actually, I actually uh, put on uh, YouTube a bunch of um, a, a bunch of songs, about six songs that were taken right from the song. But of course, yeah, one of the first ones was Wagon Wheel. Mm -hmm. So in the same kind of in the same tune. Um, anyway, ended up walking by a strawberry cellar and a car that had passed me by earlier, heading the other way, now stopped and rolled down the window. Woman by the name of Marianne asked if I needed a ride. Strange. Nicer neighborhood, a bunch of golf courses around, and the first ride from a woman on the trip. She took me back to her place, and I met her husband and her adult kids. Took a she asked you if you weren't even having a sign? or. Yeah, so, so I, I, I'm sure I probably had a sign at that point, and I was walking down the street, and yes. she, I think she was a concerned mother, and so she was looking <laughs> out a little bit. I think there was some of that. I was... I was a surprise. She's the first woman to pick me up this as well. This is Ontario. This is Southern Ontario. And Canadians, it helps that it was in Canada, yes, too. Yes. People are friendlier. And, yes. Yeah. Um, took a shower. She threw my dirty clothes in the laundry and I changed them. Wow! <laughs> Another nice mother. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And I changed into pants and a shirt of her husband, Donnie. No! <laughs> At this, at the time, still ha I still had the, have the shirt that says I got lucky at the Brassy. Had a delicious steak dinner with corn, a full family meal. Then we played cornhole out in the yard with the sun setting over the crops. What's cornhole? So cornhole is a game with uh, bean bags, and they had and one was uh, painted uh, with an American flag, and then the other was painted with a Canadian flag, and you just throw it into the hole in the middle, and that's how you score points. Oh. Kinda. Yeah. You're good flipping. Yeah. And that's funny. So in Canada, they do. They have the two flags. Because here, it's just a color. You pick whatever oh, made yeah, that color. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to wow. remember if it was homemade or not. But that's it was kind of a farm area, a lot yeah. of corn around. So they could easily just picked it up and kind of beautiful setting sun at the time that we were doing it. Um, let's see. Had a delicious steak dinner with a corn, a full family meal. Then we played cornhole out in the yard with the sun setting over the crops. One board, stars and stripes, the other a maple leaf. Marianne showed me her garden with squash, beans, and maize planted symbiotically. Okay, and then I kind of go over to uh, tips. So some tips from the road. Um, tip, when you, get into a vehicle, when you get into a vehicle, keep them talking. They may take you farther than originally thought. <laughs> shame, shame. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do, dude. Yeah. Uh, Tip, when you get into someone's car for the first time, all they can see is the person in front of them. They know not your story nor you theirs. Both of you will have to hazard guesses for your own protection and well-being. All either of you can judge before words are uttered is simply what your senses can take in. Try to find objectivity you might have more in common than you thought. Now, do you look carefully uh, before you get in? Yeah. And there's another photo right there. It's a little small, but uh, yeah. Do you look carefully before you get into the... Do you, have you ever rejected a lift? Um, I hadn't, but I mean, I know, I, you know, I know what I looked like at the time. I had long dreadlocks, big beard, worked in the outdoors. I was wearing, I'm wearing exactly what I'm wearing today. Um, so uh, basically kind of some outdoors here as well um, and changed as it got warmer um, later on in the trip. But um, I, I think I look friendly, but also potentially intimidating too. So yeah, it's kind right. of a good, good side of the coin. Um, um, so I mainly just hopped in. 
I mainly have been, to, but I was aware of who I was getting in the car with, you know. You know, I was aware if someone was a drug addict. I was aware, you know, if someone was nervous. Um, but that would be too late, right? What? Once yeah. you're in, you're in. No, you can tell them to stop. Oh, yes, I have done that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can tell them to stop. I mean, yeah. are they going to stop or not? But uh, And it's also where you take the conversation and kind of how you ease them in. Mm. Or, you know, you just kind of have to, you have to judge it and play it by ear, definitely. Um, it's pretty women can't hitchhike. They do hitchhike. They, they do. do. I met. Yeah, I met on the road. No, I met, yeah. alone. In the U.S. Was, can't yeah, go. alone. Um, women wow. hitching alone. Yes, they still to this day. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. More in Canada or U.S. or this was in the U.S. in Utah that I met this young. I think she was eighteen actually, and um, but she's smart. She was androgynously dressed. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't tell from a distance, because most people, especially are pulling up mm -hmm. um, from a little bit of a distance, and she had dreadlocks, and she had flannel that was loose-fitting loose fit, loose clothing, so that was smart by her. It was smart by wow, her. Wow, um, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, and she, she was really young, 18, and kind of going for it. Um, and here's some, um, some, some objects. Uh, this is the original... Uh, journal ease along the way um that has some of the photos in it but um this is the very backpack that uh that i used along the way you can see that it's just a regular uh day pack right there looked at it only rained really bad on me one time and i did have rain gear in. we got a sleeping bag attached in uh in back and of course uh some some water bottles and then there's a bunch of uh different ob objects that i'll pull in a a uh, little bit towards the end of the interview, so, yeah. And when you left in Boston, did yeah. you have cans, or what did you have on you for food? So food-wise, what I would do is pick it up from a gas station. I had just kind of a basic Tupperware plastic container, mm -hmm. and um, my, my, I had two meals. I had, like, kind of, like, bagels and cream cheese for breakfast, um, because if you get whipped cream cheese, I, I'd done this from a previous grand trip, um, it actually doesn't go bad if it's not refrigerated because they've taken most of the liquid out of it. It's mostly air and the cheese itself oh. for some strange reason. So even once it's open, you're good for a few days to a week. Um, and then what I also had is the main meal for lunch and dinner, uh, with some exceptions, but most days uh, was high protein. Um, so I could keep the energy up for just walking and hiking to the next exit. And what that was is um, black beans mm -hmm. and, um, and peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you replace uh, with the can of beans, you replace chili instead with meat in it. Um, and then just mix it all up in a Tupperware container. Maybe throw condiments on or not if you got them. And then it's, much, it's basically just fuel. And then continue on. Um, and then kind of carry like two days worth of rations. And so you can kind of keep moving and you don't have to worry too much. And then I believe uh, three Nalgene's or so, about three liters of water. So, yeah. Um, okay, so you, you leave the family in near Niagara Falls. Yes. And what happens next? Yes. Okay. So... Uh, Next, um, I actually, I finally, a little, a number of things happen, but we can just skip ahead for now, and if you want to check out what happens in between, a lot happened, um, but um, I, I ended up eventually in Wisconsin, so I, I took um, a ferry across Lake Michigan, which I uh, saved up for, mm -hmm. the Lake Express Ferry uh, from Muskegon, uh, Michigan to Milwaukee, and then I had to make it from uh, Milwaukee, where it got rained on real bad, to and slept underneath an under uh, overpass, um, and I had to uh, make it to uh, Madison because I had a cousin, a little bit more distant cousin who actually now lives in uh, the area here, and um, to meet up with her. So I'll read that part and uh, and see what your impressions are. We can, uh, we were talking, you can imagine On the Road Again by Willie Nelson in the background. Sort of, it? Yes. <laughs> well, was, Walt Whitman has a famous poem, Song of the Open Road. <laughs> okay. Chapter 6, 7 slash 7, 15, day 15, Tuesday. Went to a convenience store owned by an Indian family. Got a map, better map of Wisconsin, and made a sign for Madison. Called Cousin Susan, who lives there. 
and let her know I might be there today or tomorrow. Arrived in Madison and went up to the Capitol building, called her. She said to call her back at 8 p.m. Beforehand, hung out in the park with four junkies nearby overlooking one of the lakes. Mm -hmm. Went to a cafe, ordered a Mexican hot chocolate, and read Smithsonian Magazine. Chaffee called. That's Brandon Chaffee from before. Wow. And I was now running late to meet Susan. Met her and went through family photos of Bernstein's who are on my biological mother's side. There were a few I remembered, but most of them were more my mother or grandparents' ge generation. I stared at them with a vague look of recognition as she explained how everyone was related. Met her husband, who had just gotten the complete collection of the decline of Western civilization. Wow. They both had glasses, well-focused eyes, and shorter hair. Their eyes held long memories from reading, digesting, formulating, and making presentations to students. Eyes used to communicate understandings. I was focused on the baseline at the time. Eat almonds, sorbet, drink beer. More conversation. Susan joked that she would quiz me on family history and people's names and who they were related to in the morning. Sleepover. Tip. Family and friends are a comfort on the road. They are also most likely to throw you off the way you would have things done. Their concerns are valid. Their concerns are valid for them. They are not your concerns. For example? <laughs> I will, I will oh, tell okay. you momentarily. Okay. Uh, yeah. Chapter 7, 7-8-15-16, seven Wednesday. Wake up, talk to Susan, have breakfast briefly, and went over the family photos and was quizzed with mixed results. Susan made sure to correct any mistakes, eat pizza with her husband, who was a few years younger than her, and talked about life in Hitchin as a lost art. A lost art, as if the heyday of Hitchin was decades past, when there was a more willing common cultural sensibility. Susan and her husband are both professors at the University of Wisconsin. Wow. They are especially concerned as they are parents, so they project their own daughter Flora, an only child, onto me as if she was the one traveling and facing dangers. <laughs> Her husband helped drop me off at Route 18 slash 151. Oh, so yeah, that's I think that was their their concern was their projection of their daughter onto. That was when see when I was doing the hitching, there was no cell phones. No, yeah. So yeah, what did you have to do then? How did you figure that out? Um, I mean, I could call from. I didn't. I got to Pittsburgh, Kansas. Yeah. yeah. At five in the morning, mm -hmm. I had never been there, <laughs> <laughs> and about and I just slept on the lawn of my friend's home. With his, mm -hmm. He was with his parents. Yes, and then knocked around. They, <laughs> they, they, they embraced me like family. It was mm -hmm. very nice, very different. Yes. You know, Kansas mm -hmm. versus Chicago. Yes, <laughs> but I loved it. I only got scared once, as I told you, in Omaha. Oh, oh no, and the other time. Yeah. I don't think I was scared when the shotgun came out of the front door. Oh, yeah. Um, I was hitching in um, to visit a friend in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Got out of a car because the guys were drinking. You probably wouldn't have done that, right? What do you mean? I was, they asked me to have a beer, and I was... Oh, yeah, I, I did that, that. Yeah, I, I totally would, did that on the road. I, yeah. would, I would have been... I was had a beer, had a smoke. Foolishly yeah, scared that they would be drunk drivers. <laughs> yeah, it's a concern, but if you want to ride, you want to ride, too. So you have to you just use your own judgment, I guess. I got out, saw, an old, saw a, a service station on the road, walked over... Nobody was there. There was a couch on the front yeah. porch. I was, I guess, brave, dumb, just slept on the couch. Very tired. Mm -hmm. Yes. On the couch. And a shotgun came, or a, a, a barrel of a gun, yeah. maybe it was a rifle, yeah. came out of the door at about six in the morning and they interviewed me. Who yeah. are you? Yes. And then said, he's as innocent as a dog. I know. <laughs> oh, those were fun days. And of course, in Israel, everybody hitched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, it was, that was just the way to do it. Mm -hmm. I, do old people hitch? Yes, they used to, right? Yeah, I, yeah I've, I've picked up some older hitchhikers before. Oh, you yeah. have? Yeah, I have, yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah, one guy in particular from, um, you know, yeah, obviously late, later on, a uh, year, about a year ago, or maybe a little more, a couple oh. years ago. But yeah, he was hitching right through the desert from um, in between 
He's coming from a little bit outside of Utah, um, heading across uh, the desert, uh, near, not too far for, away from Tuba City. Okay, so know. where do we leave you? You were, yeah, so where do we leave you now? You so, were. yeah, so it's hitching there. And I'm, I'm going to jump ahead and I think just read through a, three more passages and then we can get to kind of just talk. Oh, we should read one, one at a time, maybe, the passage? Uh, okay, yeah, 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 just given the time, that's yeah, why before, I was there. Yeah. Before you uh, yeah. started out um, on this venture, had you picked up a lot of hitchhikers? Um, I, I picked up a, a, a few. No, I wouldn't say a lot, probably yeah. in the single digit. Just like, I don't know, maybe three or so. Yeah, yeah in yeah. this area. No, not, oh, I, I picked up a guy more recently, but no, before the trip, no, not in this area, in Louisiana mm -hmm. one time, maybe a couple other times, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, not, not too much, kind of. Mm -hmm. I was kinda pretty brave in Arizona, yeah. I was picked up by a motorcycle. Yeah. And just held on for dear life, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he mm -hmm. drove me a long way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but you have some passages. To yeah, read. that'd be That's great good. if we can kind of yeah, just so read through those few, and then you can circle back, and then okay. then I won't be reading anymore. Okay. We can kind of just be present in the sure. moment. Great. All right. There we go. Okay. So this, uh, this is uh, in southern Oregon um, at this point. Wow. So jumping ahead, a big, big time. Yes. But, all right. We all stripped down naked and took separate pools. One pool sat over an edge, and I could have easily slipped down off the edge of the cliff. Figures slipped in and out from the trail. I went into the sheltered pool the young woman had chosen to relax in after driving us so far. She left the pool swiftly. During the next hour, she explained, in my culture, native culture, it is not right for men and women to be naked around each other after just meeting. She admitted, I know you, you didn't know this, but it made me feel uncomfortable. I thought to myself, I didn't know about this point. On the other hand, I still did knowingly risk the same body of water as her. I said, oh, okay. Well, I get that it made you uncomfortable. I'll try to ask next time. I need to be conscious. I felt glad she had expressed herself. At the same time, while I traveled, I wanted to be able to express myself unfiltered and act in the moment. When I worked with kids previously, there had been strict parameters. I had to follow from language to behavior, and I didn't want to feel like I was idling it anymore as I hitchhiked the country. It felt much better to ask forgiveness, if warranted, than to ask permission. Also warranted or not, I felt like I'd apologized to enough women in my life over perceived minor offenses. <laughs> it seemed to me that they had often taken the victim role, right or wrong, and I'd gotten sick and tired of it. <laughs> I walked down the hill from whence we came. So what, how did it start, though? What? Um, oh, well, we were, so that was some hot springs that me and, th and two guys that, that she was driving with, we all kind of... Kind of they, they were traveling together, and then I then she was like, oh, do you want to throw in them gas? We'll give you a ride. Yeah. And so we started traveling, and we went to these hot springs, and that's kind of what happened. But how did, how, how did she get naked and you get naked? In well, every, everybody got naked. It was more just uh, we were in different hot springs, and then I was going in the same hot springs. Oh! So, and then she... She didn't want you in the same hot springs. Hot springs. Like for her. Good for her. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. The, the thing at the time was she just got up rather than saying anything. She, um, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Understand. So, you know, you can have different opinions on that. You can just tell, I don't want to be in the same hot spring. Yes, but, um, yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to keep Breeze on through okay. and go to the next one, and then we can circle on that. Okay. I think that works. Um, it's back. So this is, yeah, this is going to be about the uh, end of a relationship mm -hmm. that happened. On the road, you can drop down and rise up so easily. Shay texted me saying I should stop by the bar before I leave. I thought of what to say, repeating it in my mind. She offered, would you like a drink? No, I'm good, I said. It would have been a Guinness. As she came over, her blue eyes looked at me across the bar. Tiredness in my voice. Our communication is horrible. She agreed, and we talked just a few sentences more, and hugged and kissed goodbye. 
sent a text to her much later that said, let's talk after you come back from France. After the burn, there was no response. That's fine. Though if I had told the unbridled truth in full when we were both lying on the bed together with the responsive change, I do feel differently now. Yes, I do feel horny. Yes, maybe I'm somewhat distracted. I saw another woman on the road. She picked me up. We hooked up. My soul focuses on, on you. I still want you. That poster on your wall gives me doubts. That half-naked woman raises questions for me about your sexuality. Where are you at with who you're attracted to? Because where I'm at is I'm going to keep on moving unless, and this is a giant unless, there is something else. <laughs> so let me know if there is. If there is, then we can figure something out now or at least plan for later. If not, though, just make it clear. Tell me. Because I'm out on the road and nowhere to go but south. Chances are I'll be laying my head down on my mat in the, by the ditch. So really, give us the so, scene, though. Wait. So no, go on yet. What, what? How did you meet her? What was going so on? So this, this was a woman I met who was bartending in Oakland. Yeah. And, um, and we spent some time, a little bit, went down to Modesto with her. And, um, and... Uh, hung out at her place and I had traveled uh, to go up to Oregon to see some friends up there and come back down and um, and we had, had an argument shortly before that. Before you traveled? Before or? the passage that I just read, yeah. And what was it? Oh, but you had liked her enough to go to Oregon and then come back and be with her? Well, yeah, I was I, I was also passing back through the bay yes. too. I, I knew some other people. And what was the, the argument, what was the argument about? Um, it, it, it had to do with sex and mixed signals, but for more, you'll have to read that. Oh, 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 Sarah, I didn't realize this would be cruel and unusual punishment. Sorry, viewers, but we're not allowed to advertise, but if you're interested, you could look, you could always browse in those bookstores and read it. Oh, too bad. So, to finish this up. So I need to know, what do you want? What do you need? And that is the double-edged sword, whereas her initial attraction may have had to do with my rambling, so did her justified feelings of insecurity at my leaving town, only to return two random weeks later. The price of relationships made through travel? Ah, but does it make things more dynamic? Are you then an exotic commodity? What would or wouldn't happen if you stayed? Oh, did you ever want to stay? Did you, there's some part of you, yes, it seems. Oh uh, yeah, I think I I think there definitely was at the time some part that was interesting. Um, yeah, it oh, was interesting, my. but the communication would have to be better from both of us, <laughs> and we would have to both want the same things. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm gonna just. Isn't there a famous Dylan song? One more cup of coffee for the road. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is just the last passage I'm going to read, and it's a quite short passage. Uh, it'll be a little more freed up to talk a little more openly. <laughs> All right. Still to this day, there's this underlying desire, a longing for a deeper connection, longing for more. That more is possibly meeting someone traveling you never knew existed. Meeting eyes in Vermont, crossing paths outside Portland, sharing that sense of longing across the bar, that longing not just of someone, but of the rarely known and unknown that you've set out for, a longing for the concrete and the other real. And the what? Other real. What's the last one? Other real. Other real? Yeah, like kind of like extra real or hyper real, almost a, fanta a fantastical version of reality. Oh. So. Well. So how did the and what was what was the last day of your journey? Um, uh, the last day of the journey was um, in New Mexico, and that was uh, getting on a train to to, to Boston. No, well, no, no, getting on a getting on just a train from Santa Fe to um, to Albuquerque, and then getting on the flight to Boston. Oh, yeah. So what place did you like the best? Um, Let's see, for, uh, it, so I was, I was like, if you, uh, I'll put it this way, um, for, I like the, it, I like different places for different reasons. So, um, for hitchhiking, Wisconsin, easiest place to hitchhike ever in the U U.S. at least. Because? I didn't wait more than 10 minutes for a ride. It was ridiculous. Oh, it, I, yeah, I got through quick. More than Canada, even. Yeah, I don't know what it was. People were friendly in Wisconsin. We even stopped at the uh, Mont Chevra uh, goat cheese factory mm. all there. Oh. This woman's husband worked there. So 
Yeah, it was very, it was amazing. It was like, it was very, very quick, yeah. Yeah. So, and, um, yeah, yeah, it just depends. I mean, I mean, not for hitchhiking. One of my favorite states is North Carolina, but that has to do with the variety and the outdoors. Oh. Yeah, so. The Outer Banks? Uh, yeah, just, just North Carolina as yeah. a whole state in general. Um, so, and the, what did you, did you get the chance to appreciate the United States and the, you know, the beauty of it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely, but also you're on a, you're on a road. You're on a highway most of the time, oh, too. So, so not, yeah, oh. it's not, uh, yeah, so definitely this, uh, I've gone on other trips that are more like, oh, national parks see the beauty. Yeah. But, but you get to see, I think the most you get to see is like the diversity of people mm -hmm. and, and, the, and all the people, very different people that you, that you get to meet that give you a ride. Yeah. I'm oh, oh, sorry, so you Did you say? find that you were talking a good percentage of the time or were you just reading your own books and also a cell phone did you turn that on did you keep that off so my phone was mainly off unless i needed to call someone i just thought it was a distraction um for the most part and um and uh yeah i was talking and that's also how you keep the rides going longer too mm -hmm. so they might be they might just take you a little further oh yeah this is good i like this person Shame. i'll drive you an extra couple Shame. exits I did feel responsible to talk to truckers. Oh, yeah. And you're kind of there. You're kind of like, they're picking you up. So you some people don't want to talk. They're just doing you a favor. You but some people entertain. want some entertainment yes. or they're on a lo yes. alone on a long trip. Like, yes. they want some enjoyment. Or And then a number, a few people had hitchhiked before. So you'll share stories and kind of pick up um, tips. I know, love things. doing this now mm -hmm. on lips. Yeah. Short. They're short, usually. Yeah. But... If I walk in and give them a five dollar tip, sit in the front seat almost always. Yeah. And talk, they the stories that yeah. people will tell you. Mm -hmm. And most people I found lift is a hard job. Yeah, if you're working a lot of hours. Yes. Yeah, sure and for is, not much you know, money. Yeah. And yeah. wear and tear in your car. But many of them are happy. Many yeah. of the, Yeah, well, you're, you're not, you don't have to, you can also stop, you know, a lot of it, depending on how you do it. The one advantage of that is you're your own boss, at least. Yes. And that, even if you're not earning that much money, that can be a peace of mind. You can, you know, in between the drivers, you can play the music you wanted. You're, you don't have someone, like, constantly telling you what to do. I mean, you got to drive somewhere. But you can kind of hopefully just chill out and drive. I mean, rough in the Boston area. And I know rough for lift drivers picking up from the airport because then they can get uh, fined. And I've, uh, I've been picked up by a driver and that's happened before. So, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but, but I, you don't have to deal with a boss, which is... I love strangers on the train. Mm -hmm. Or in a plane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plane was harder because I had to do it for a little too long. Yeah. I would start a conversation and then be laughed. Yeah. But I, I think train train is one of the best ones. I've only taken like a few like Amtraks or whatever, but I think the train is the nicest balance mm -hmm. in, ter in terms of like you're traveling along with someone and then you, but you can move, you can get up, you can go to the lounge mm -hmm. car, you can still walk around, but you're still getting to your destination. Are you tempted to drive? Because you, you drive too, right? Mm -hmm. Are you tempted to drive through? Of course, America. I have, I have. Oh, you have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like. Not, I don't know if I've, I've ever gone clear, to, but I've done between Arizona and here. I've done uh, between like b uh, Boston to Austin. And by what's, way, it, of, and what's the difference? Because you don't meet all the people when you drive. Well, yeah, you're just. It, you, it depends if you're driving with someone or not. I yeah. think it's different if you're alone. Um, Could you? When you're alone, you you have to get out of your comfort zone more, especially if you're if you happen to be interacting with people then you have to get out of your comfort zone more. So you tend to grow more, um, and you, you probably learn a little bit more about yourself. But when you're, when you're with other people, you learn more about them or your relationship uh, with them. So what was the thing you most learned? Hmm. I think, I think uh, to, to basically, uh, at the end, I would say, to try to see, um, to try to see kind of what's going on in a present moment, um, and everything that goes goes into it, 
in all in all the colors and the hues that it is. Tell me, tell me more. Um, so for okay, so for instance, if you're just if you're just looking at you're if you're just looking at someone, um, you you can look at them. You can do the simple black white, you know, or see them in shades of gray. But you can see, all right, you can look at someone and see, are they nervous? What how have they arrived here? What what is brought? What is the narrative involved? You should try to see all the stories and all the dynamics behind someone in one moment, and the best time to do that or is in a state of flow. So I'd con I'd uh, combine that perspective to the idea. I think Chickas Beely, the guy's name, that coined the term, but in a state of flow. When you do something that you're really good at, yes. and then you no longer think about it, um, and so trying to apply a state of flow to perspective. Which is very difficult and rarely happens, but on occasion. A state of, and how is that related to this hitching book? Well, you're well, you're kind of going, going, moving, 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 so you're in and a then state of and flow. then once it's then once it's getting towards the end, it's like, and you know you're going to go back. It's kind of like, well, I have to do this now. What did I what did I learn? And uh, my friend Matteo kind of helped lead me to that point towards the end. Yeah. To. So, that one to, yeah, kind of. It was my own epiphany, but he kind of had the idea to shift perspective. On so, that so I, we still have um, fifty seconds. Tell me more. We'll say goodbye with this. Yes. Okay. Um, well, uh, the final thing I just want to say is um, just once again, uh, the book is uh, Hitchin, and it's available on Amazon, and it's also available in uh, at, in Harvard Square at the Millionaire Picnic. The Harvard Books there, Central Square, Seven Stars, Winchester at Bookends, and the recording will be done at the end of March, if and you like the audio recording. Yes, and we're doing this for inf information, because that's what we have to do with CCTV. Yes. So you can see this book and read it. You don't need to buy it in all those places. Yes, yes. And on Amazon, you can take a peek and see what's there. there exactly, you can. And maybe be inspired yeah. to take a trip. Yeah, and you can find an adventure of your own, and it doesn't need oh, to be hitchhiking. 